This is one of those romance books where I feel like they should have stayed friends. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It is the end of the month. Can you believe it? We're already a month into 2022. That's crazy to me. It's been such a chaotic year already. I honestly fail to comprehend how. Anyway, let's just talk about books. This month I read a total of seven books which is not bad but it's not the best either considering i only got back into reading like a couple of months ago i'll take this as a win whatever it's fine so the first book of the year i read on my kindle and it's the play by l kennedy now this book this was a rough start to the year for me i absolutely hated this book now this is the third book in the briar you series which is the spin-off of the off-campus series so i can't talk too much about the synopsis but this one is Hunter's book and Hunter has been mentioned like since off campus. So I was really excited to read about his book and I was so disappointed by it. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I really did not like this book. Honestly, it would have been a 1 star if I didn't like their friendship. This is one of those romance books where I feel like they should have stayed friends. They were such good friends. Like I really love their friendship. I love how their friendship was developing. But then like once the romance started, it kind of started getting weird. The girl did something really annoying that I hated. And then El Kennedy also brought up a really... <laughs> she also brought up a really sensitive topic in a really insensitive way. And I absolutely hated that. Like the last part of the book was also extremely, extremely, extremely predictable. I was honestly really pissed off. I almost didn't finish it. And if I hadn't finished it, I still would have known exactly what would have happened like play by play. Like, ugh. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking about this book, but this was definitely not a good start to the year. Let's just move on to the next book, which was Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I love this book. This is a reread for me. And honestly, after reading the play, I needed to read something that I knew I was gonna love. So I listened to this on audiobook and it was still just as good the, the second time. This is the first book in the Lunar Chronicles series. And every single book in the series is a retelling of fairy tales and it focuses on different fairy tales. But this first one focuses on Cinder. Cinderella's story. She's a cyborg. It's really cool. It's like a sci-fi dystopian fantasy type of book. So really good escapism. There's a pandemic. Um, love that. Obviously there's a cute Prince Charming, Prince Kai. There's a lot of political intrigue. I gave this a four out of five stars. Really great book. And then the next book that I picked up is gonna be the first five star read of the year. If you watched my last video, you can see my live reaction to this. I did a reading vlog on it and it is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Again, five out of five stars. This is a Trojan War retelling. So there's a lot of Greek mythology involved or it is Greek mythology, but this is told from the point of Patroclus, which if you're familiar with the myth, you don't really see much of Patroclus. So that was a really cool twist, I guess. This was just really beautifully written. Even if you're not a fan of Greek mythology, if you don't know any about Greek mythology this is a very approachable book she explains everything that you need to know on here and it's not like info dumpy either oh this was so beautiful the way she handled the ending was perfection I could go on and on about this book and literally talk about it forever so I'm gonna shut up now but this is a five out of five stars I feel like at this point everyone's heard of this book because it's been so popular in book talk but and then the next book I listened to an audiobook and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid this was a huge surprise for me. I don't remember when this book came out, but it was a couple of years ago and I remember everybody was freaking out about it. Everyone was like, oh my god, it's so good, it's so good. But I never really gave it any attention because the premise didn't sound good to me. I went into this book not really expecting much because I was like, it's set in Hollywood and it's about this band. And I also knew that the book was written in like an interview style format and I really didn't think I was gonna like it. I have this thing about books set in LA or in Hollywood, specifically in Hollywood. I don't like reading about that setting because it takes me out of the story a lot. I don't know, maybe it's because I've lived here my whole life and I know the city very well and people always romanticizes the place or like they talk about it in a really weird way that it rose me the wrong way. It's definitely a personal thing, but I really, really enjoyed this book. The audiobook was great. It had a full cast. Every single character was narrated by a different person. It was great. I gave this one a four out of five stars so beautifully written so that was a really nice surprise for me and then the next book <sighs> the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood now this book again has been everywhere it's been all over book talk all over booktube even people have been reading this book have been talking about it and recently there's been like a new surge people are reading it after like it's gotten so hyped up and people are like 
good. Here's the thing, I get it. I get what they're coming from. It's not the best book ever, but I did give it a five out of five stars. I went into this book really not knowing much. I just knew that it was very hyped up. I knew it was a romance and I knew that it involved a biology PhD student. And when I heard that, I was like, sold, sold, sold. Like as a woman in STEM, I really don't read a lot of books, like fiction books about other women in STEM. I thought it would be really interesting to read about and I was not wrong. I love the main character. I connected with her pretty much instantly from the first page of this book i was like i know i'm gonna absolutely love this book and i know that i'm gonna be absolutely biased by my reviews yeah i did give this a five out of five stars don't get me wrong i think the romance is really cute i love the romance which i was honestly kind of scared about because i heard that he was a professor and she's a student and i don't like that i don't like student teacher romances because the power dynamic is so off but don't worry she's not his student she was never his student so the power dynamic isn't weird in that sense but for me the romance wasn't really the highlight of this book it was more so the setting it was more so hearing about what she was doing with her phd the struggles that she had in academia that was my favorite part of it the cheesy science jokes like i have been talking about this book for way too long i'm gonna put it down five out of five stars if you haven't read it pick it up give it a chance period and then the next book i read i also read on my kindle and this is the dare by l kennedy this is the fourth and final book in the briar u series so i have now officially read all of the off campus and briar u books which i'm very excited about but this book i gave a three out of five stars it was okay it wasn't great it wasn't my favorite but it wasn't bad i definitely enjoyed it a lot more than the one before this whatever that one's called but this one it's a little bit different in the sense that the guy is new he's new in the sense that he was only introduced in the last book one of my main gripes about it though is that it felt kind of insta lovey very cheesy but there were like some cute funny moments there's also a little bit more of that bro banter here which i missed in the all the other briar u books that was my favorite part of the off-campus series was this banter between the boys so i was kind of disappointed when it wasn't there with the other off-campus books here it was kind of that not quite as good but it's there. So I enjoyed that aspect. And Connor is always in a silly, goofy mood, which is great. Yeah, the ending was kind of odd, honestly. <laughs> There's something that happened in the end that I thought was like, I, I don't know how to feel about it, but I enjoyed it. Like it was a very quick, easy read. Oh my God. Oh my God. I almost forgot to mention in the last book, the play, the first one that I read this year. Oh my freaking God. The storyline between Rupee and Hollis. What the hell was that about? what happened there i don't get it the last and final book that i read this month was another reread so i guess this is a month of rereads it is one of my favorite books of all time city of bones by cassandra clare rise and shine i love this book i love this world i love this series i will say this book or even like the series itself the moral instrument series is not really the best in the shadow hunter world of cassandra clare but this book is definitely the most special to me i first read this in middle school and i will always credit this as the book that got me into reading i just randomly picked up this book i didn't know anything about it and i was hooked and from then on i have been a reader but previously to that i never really read books unless it was like a sign for school this is a very special book for me and i'm really glad to be back in this world again i'm planning on rereading the entire like shadow wonder world i didn't even tell you what this is about i gave this a five out of five stars I, that's a biased rating realistically i feel like this is more of a four but it's a five for me this one is about a teenage girl who finds out that she's actually a shadow hunter and her mom's been hiding it from her whole life and a shadow hunter they're basically like demon hunters she finds that out and then there's like a whole drama with her family she meets a cute shadow hunter boy obviously she made some really cool shadow hunter friends and she started exploring this new world of shadow hunters but i will say there's a really strange twist that happens towards the end of the book if you first read it and you don't know and you're probably gonna be like what the hell but i promise you it's not as weird it's not as weird as it sounds please just continue at least give it until the next book if you've read this book you know exactly what i'm talking about but um yeah so that is everything that i read this month again it's not that many books but it's not bad either and it was also a pretty decent reading month like i read three five star books which is very unusual one of them is a reread so 
I don't know if that counts. And I only read one book that I hated. So that's not bad, right? Like, I'll take it. Let me know down below what your guys' favorite book and least favorite book that you read this month. I would love to know. Like, sound off in the comments. Rant about your least favorite books and tell me why you love the books that you loved. Anyways, if you guys like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. It would really help my channel out. And if you also want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button while you're down there. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!